What can or should you do to prepare before patch 9.1? Hey, it's Sol with a splash screen, and let's begin by addressing the very clever players with their super clever ideas that you should unsubscribe or uninstall and quit the game, downvote and leave snarky comments on every WoW related video that you see, go play the latest WoW killer and of course, etc. But the first thing that you should do before 9.1 is something close to that. Relax. We all know how WoW works by now. There will be plenty of catch-ups and pacing to ensure that anyone who wants to get ahead can get ahead, but never too far ahead. And anyone playing catch-up will put in the work, but they can be up and running at a pretty reasonable pace. So if you're on break, go ahead and be on break if you want. The remainder of this guide hopes to be helpful for anyone looking for something to work towards or for you late game folk who want any advantage that they can. Keep in mind this information is coming early, it's PTR stuff, so I suggest that you stay on the lookout for news and updates in case things change. So let's get to some actual tips. Consider farming some extra soul ash on your main characters and or your alts. A few new legendaries are coming that you might be interested in or that you'll just want to make for the sake of collecting. Also, you'll be able to trade Soul Ash account-wide by purchasing a bag of Soul Ash. On the PTR, you can talk to Bonesmith Hermir to pony up 300 Soul Ash and get a bag worth 250 Soul Ash that you can trade. Considering this, you can opt to either farm up ash on your main to give to alts or farm up ash on your alts and then pump it into a character that you care about after the patch drops and you've decided who is deserving of the extra resources. Keep in mind though that after 9.1 more soul ash will drop to the tune of an extra 50% which is fairly significant. But if you're not doing much now, this is an idea to consider if you want to be a step ahead. 9.1 is going to have a questline that is immediately accessible. Well, the first chapter is accessible at least. Right now, there's a requirement to complete the quest after defeating Sire Denathrius. So you want to make sure Denathrius has been defeated and the questline attached to him is done. This quest can be accessed from any difficulty, including Raid Finder. And a reminder, you do need an item level of 170 to access the Raid Finder wings. This requirement does feel a little awkward though, so it's not going to surprise me if this happens to be lifted before the patch goes live. I just wanted to let you know now. Stygia still has a use in 9.1. There's a vendor in Corthia you can access very early into the patch content that sells this stuff, Corthian Armaments. This is upgradable gear that is tradable account-wide. It starts off at an item level of 200, so it's more or less catch-up gear for your alts. The cost is pretty high, at a thousand stigia per piece, and because the pieces are not slot specific, there's no telling if you're going to get a bunch of repeats. In 9.1, there's going to be a big revamp of the Maw that might compel you to stay there longer, and by consequence, you might end up farming up stigia. Even if this item may not interest you, farming ahead will save you some time because the rep vendor in Corthia also sells a bunch of cosmetics, including mounts, and an ensemble specific to your covenant. At the moment, the primary crafting materials of ore, leather, and cloth are what I consider to be at a lower price, given the demand, all thanks to this very long first season. But come season 2, new legendary ranks means new legendary base materials, which means these prices are bound to go up. It appears that these new ranks will also have levels to gain. All in all, if you're into the crafting game, it might be worth stockpiling materials now before prices go up. Gatherers might have noticed that some materials like porous stones have too little use to be of value. New recipes have been popping up, oddly enough from cooking, that use these materials. They're not testable yet, as in I don't know the vendor price, so there's no telling if we can take all these extra materials and do some sort of vendor shuffle. Blizzard has recently been very conscious of not wanting stuff like that to happen, but we'll just have to hold and see for now. Consider collecting and leveling all of the available followers for your mission table. If you haven't noticed already, the mission table is much more lucrative this time around between augment runes and resource caches that you sell in the auction house. Doing this across multiple alts can yield a pretty decent gold income. What's more, at least three followers are being added in 9.1 via Renown, and while I've yet to see them in testing, there are other followers that have been added during this PTR cycle, including one Ben Howell who, minor spoiler alert, was sent into the Maw. This indicates to me at least that there will be even more followers found in Torghast. 
In the long term, this sets up a very expansive team of followers to send off for rewards without much effort at all. And don't worry, it seems that there's going to be buffs that we'll get with Renown that will give followers big experience boosts, so we're not carrying them for too long. If you've got alts that you haven't leveled yet, now is a good time given the wait. There's no experience reduction, at least at the moment, but leveling now, when there's less urgency, is probably more efficient than being able to level a few hours faster after the patch. And it's reasonably okay to get your leveling to 60 done, and that's it. I mean, don't even choose a covenant yet if you're on the fence for those alts. The renowned catch-ups that you're familiar with are going to have an even higher rate of happening up until Renown 40, and so far there's no skip for the covenant campaign. I've been theorizing slash requesting slash demanding that if you've completed, say, the Necrolord campaign once, you should have the opportunity to skip it on other characters. Something like this can still be put into the patch, and maybe by the time you watch this, you can, which will be great. So TLDR in that big old jumble of words, stage your other characters at level 60 for now, and then hold off for a big update to the PTR. And for now, that is it. This is a lot less stressful than other patch prep videos I've done, so get right to it, or don't. But I hope this guide was useful. If so, please press the like button, subscribe for more guides and all things Warcraft, and we will see you later. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.